Today, we are going to cover the sixth subtopic of topic one motion called turning effect, center of mass and pressure, or in the IGCSE syllabus is called forces continued. Turning effect. The moment of a force is the measure of its turning effect. Everyday examples include a door, a seesaw, and a revolving door. I'll draw what the moment is. For example, the door needs to be opened and your when you move your hand, it has a moment. And your hand when moving has a turning effect. So it moves like that. The seesaw. This person is a certain distance from the seesaw and has a force, which is its weight. And that gives it a turning effect or its moment, which makes it go like that. This person also has it's an anti-clockwise moment. Revolving door. When, it, when you like push it, or there's a force acting on it from a certain distance, it makes the door move around. Equilibrium and calculating moment. Calculate moment using the product force times perpendicular distance from the pivot. Moment in Newton meters equals force Newtons times perpendicular distance from pivot meters. When an object is stationary, it is in equilibrium. A body is in equilibrium when resultant force equals zero and resultant moment equals zero. Applying principles of moment. Apply the principles of moment to the balancing of a weightless beam about the pivot. I have put the link for a site for testing. Apply the principles of moment to differing situations. There are slides with questions here for you to do. Principles of moments. Uh, so we have two people here, right? They're balancing because the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment are equal. This is known as the principle of moments. When something is balanced about the pivot, total clockwise moment equals total anti-clockwise moment. You just have to remember that. I will show you an example of what you would do for like the slice of questions. So here we have an example question. We have four kilograms, 10 centimeters to the left and two kilograms, 50 centimeters to the left. And both have a turning effect and overall tip the beam to the left. So how would we balance this? First, we have to calculate the moment overall that's acting on the left side. It's an anti-clockwise moment. So four times 10 equals 40. This is a NCM. You can convert that later on. And then zero to 50. So 50 times two equals 100. This is 100 NCM. And overall, that's the turning effect, the anti-clockwise turning effect is 140 NCM. So this would have to be equal to that, this one. This is the right side, this is the clockwise. Hmm. So, yeah, that would work, yeah, that would work. Six times two, and we only have to use, yeah, we can only use two. So yeah, two here, this is equal to 120. And CM. And if I put something like two also in 10, that would be equal to, 20. All 
right? Any NCM. So overall, that will be equal to 140 NCM. So this should be balanced. But the symmetry doesn't look right. Center of mass. First, you have to perform and describe an experiment to determine the position of the center of mass of a plane lamina. I will show you a video. Hi guys, today I just want to go through an experiment of how you'd find the, the center of mass of an object like this. So it's called a uniform lamina. Lamina just means a sheet, basically. Now, the technique that you guys need to learn for the exam is that you, you pin the lamina so it can freely move like this. And then if you get something called a plumb line, a plumb line, basically it's a, it's a weight on the end of a string. If you hold it up so that it's, it's free to move and you let the plumb line just settle down. Now what you need to do is, you see I've done it already, is draw a line down here, like that, against where the plumb line meets your lamina. Then you pick a second spot, so somewhere else on your lamina. And make sure, again, it's free to, to move on your, through with it, on your little pin here. You get your plumb line again. And, oops, just getting caught. Let it move freely. And again, let the lines line up. So draw a line on the back here. You'll see I've done it already. You draw a line down here. Now where those two lines intersect, that there is your center of mass. And if I hold it like this, well, it should just about balance on that point there. Oh, there you go. Just balancing on my finger. So that's how you find the center of mass of a uh, but in lamina. Bye for now. You also have to describe qualitatively the effect of the position of the center of mass on the stability of simple objects. If the center of mass is high or higher, it's more likely to topple. But if it's a lower center of mass, low center of gravity, it, there's less likely a chance of it toppling over. As you can see in the picture in the, of the cars, it explains. And with shapes, lower stable equilibrium, higher unstable equilibrium to most likely fall. And if it's just right on the, uh, right in the center, then it's just a neutral equilibrium. Pressure. Recall and use the equation P equals F divided by A. Pressure is defined as the force acting per unit area at right angles to the surface. Pascal's PA or Newtons per meter squared equals force in Newtons divided by area in meters squared. The quantity pressure tells us about how a force is spread over an area of surface. For example, if you fill a bathtub with water, its weight will cause pressure on the bottom of the bath. If the same water was spread over the floor of the bathroom, its weight would be pressing down on a bigger area and the pressure would be less. A large force pressing on a small area gives a high pressure. A small force pressing on a large area gives a low pressure. So these are a few appropriate examples. In the first picture, you see a deep sea diver in, in a protective suit. Because the deeper you go into a massive body of water, the more pressure you will feel if you're a deep sea diver. This is because aside from the upthrust, the deeper you go, the more the weight of the water above you. Second picture, submarines or marine exploring vehicle are designed for very great pressures. 
They have curved surfaces, which are less likely to buckle under pressure, and they are made of thick metal. 